here's the RTL SDR dongle that I've been using and for the next part I want to calibrate this and I want to be able to change the antennas more easily. The device comes with this standard sort of TV coax type connector and uh, what I really need is to put uh, an SMA connector on there so it makes it easier to connect various antennas. So I've robbed this one out of an old uh, router. Let's get this apart and um, see if we can change that over. For this type of job, one of these little um, holders which is meant for mobile phone repairs come in uh, very handy. As always, uh, there's links down in the description where you can get these things. Try and get as much solder off of this connector as we can. The connector just fell off there because I already cut through the uh, central connector. Uh, here you can see the, the finished soldering job. Now this is going to need a little bit uh, of uh, support as well. So I think I'll try my old uh, baking soda and cyano trick to uh, keep this in place. Uh, here you can see I've put the baking powder, baking soda in place. Now let's get my faithful super glue. Just a couple of drops there, and that will do. And believe me, this stuff goes off harder than anything you will believe, and uh, it will keep that firmly in place. So that's the finished result, and uh, as I say, if you haven't tried this trick, go and try it now on something. Uh, you just won't believe how, how tough that is. Yet another top tip. Uh, if you're tired of only getting one use out of your little tube of uh, cyanoacrylate, um, the trick is, Make sure that the little nozzle inside is, is clear of any residue glue. Get yourself a little bag of uh, desiccant. Uh, make sure that's dried out and so maybe pop it in the microwave for 15-20 uh, seconds. Then pop them both into a sealable plastic bag. Uh, remove as much air as you can. Seal that up and uh, pop it in the freezer. And the next time you want to use it, just uh, bring it out and let it warm up to, to room temperature and you'll be good to go. With the mod completed, we can now get on with uh, other things that I need to do with this unit. Uh, I will find a suitable SMA connection for the uh, little wideband antenna there. What I'm going to be doing next involves using this antenna from uh, a GSM module makes quite a neat arrangement I think. And let's see if we can calibrate uh, our module using this uh, utility and I've downloaded the Windows version so let's just see what we need to do. So we're going to first scan and see if there's anything in the GSM 850 band. If we go now to the directory and my trick here is to hold down the shift key and right mouse click and then we can open a command window in the particular directory. Let's see what happens. So it appears not to have found anything on 850. Now I suspect here in Spain it's actually going to be on the GSM 900 band so I just need to work out what the command is for that. Let's try scanning the GSM band 900. Now, don't be surprised, this, uh, this procedure takes several minutes to scan through and uh, search for the, the various uh, channels. So you can see the, the numbers at the end reflect the, the power, so obviously the larger the number, the better the power. As you can see, it's only found the two channels, and clearly channel 100 is the stronger signal. Now we're going to execute the command to do the calibration. And the result at the end is uh, an offset of 29.339 parts per million. So now we have to go into our SDR Sharp program and uh, put in that figure. So just open up the cogwheel there for the adapter and put in the frequency correction. 
obviously we're going to be looking for 955 and run and there she blows Finally, let's go back to the RF signal generator that we built in a previous video and uh, let's see what the frequency is measured. Let's see how accurate uh, the, the frequency is now that we know the required offset. So just in the menu here, I need to find my stored values. So let's set the frequency to the 868 megahertz from my LoRa antennas. And there we can clearly see on the display the output. Now there's one thing to remember here. It appears that um, the setting for the frequency correction is not saved. So we need to put that in again. And there we can see our center frequency is not that far off.